I know that this game came a year back, but I finally had the chance to play this game and share my thoughts with you. So if you want to know everything about Plague Tale Requiem, stick around until the end as we'll be sharing everything about it. Hi, hello and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Vasharal and in today's video I'll be talking and reviewing Plague Tale Requiem. First of all, I would like to apologize for any kind of noise such as that, as our bird Zira has decided to, of course, interrupt every time I'm trying to speak. She does that every single time I am recording. I think she does that because she sees me quite animated in front of the microphone. So I want to apologize for any kind of noise coming from that. If you're confused about what's going on, it's not from any part of the video. It's just her deciding to mess about and make noises whenever I do this kind of recording. So I appreciate for sticking around until the end and for understanding this. Now with that out of the way, let's go in the description of the game. Plague Tale Requiem is the sequel of Plague Tale Innocence, a game really dear to my heart, where you continue the story of Amicia and Hugo, who are our main protagonists of this story, in which you play as Amicia, the big sister looking after her young brother Hugo. Coming off of the first game, Innocence, we we know very well that Amicia really cares about her brother as you can tell as you progress and if you play the first one Hugo goes through quite some difficult times as being ill of a particular illness and you're trying to figure out in the second one what is going on and trying to look for ways to help your brother alongside other interesting characters that you will meet along the way. This game is an action adventure with a linear story so when it comes to influencing how the story goes you do not have a hand in that pretty much the whole game focuses on the gameplay side and as well the storytelling side where you are the participant of the story and you're not able to influence the outcome of the story although despite having no saying how the story actually ends you follow along in a very interesting way very well paced in my opinion in such a way that it keeps you interested and tells a really interesting story that by far in my opinion has been one of the greatest stories ever told. This game is required to be played in sequence with the first one so if you haven't played the first one I suggest that you stop the video and go ahead and play that game then come back to this one as the story itself continues from where it was left off and it is really hard to point out a couple of things that are happening in that story from the first one without spoiling it so I will try to avoid to spoil that particular game so I'll be a little bit cryptic when it comes to that but still if you're considering to play this game I understand but of course you should definitely go and play the first one you'll get much more accustomed to the whole gameplay features that game is a little bit much more linear when it comes to that and as well the story is much more linear and easier to digest there's a lot less happening at that particular time and the introduction of the whole world and the way it is presented and the characters are much more easier to understand. You're much more connected to Hugo and Amicia at that particular time and in this one you will meet other characters, really interesting characters that are new to the series that really add more flavor to the connections that you have with this world and the characters and I really felt like there's a good bond between Amicia and Hugo and the new characters that were introduced. Plus keep in mind that the first game is a lot shorter when it comes to time spent. The puzzles are much more easier and simpler in my opinion and it is less difficult if you're planning to play back to back the games and get the grasp of the gameplay itself. So in the second one the whole action and adventure of Amicia happens in the 14th century in 
in France a few years later after the events of the first one. And as I said, you continue to see what is going on with Hugo and Amicia. And this time around, this game becomes a lot more focused on breaking the limits of possibility when it comes to the world itself, the dangers that are happening. There's a lot of new things happening in this world which have a lot more severe consequences that I don't want to go fully in depth because you want to experience yourself but it really scales up the cinematics and the feeling of anxiety of suspense it's ramped up to 10 this time I really felt like the sense of danger is there and I think the developers did a really good job at telling this story and really improving over the first one which in my opinion was one of the greatest indie game stories that I personally played and I've enjoyed and as I've said this game has been really dear to my heart so when I found out the sequel came out last year I was really happy but my computer wasn't able back then to run Plague Tale Requiem and I was worried that I'm not gonna play it so I left it for the date when I would be able to upgrade and eventually I got my hands on it it was this year a couple of weeks back and I played it and I can honestly tell you it is something really special and honestly when it comes to sequels not all of them in my opinion do an excellent job when it comes to telling a story but this one particularly has really marked me more than actually the first one did so I'm really happy to say that if you are looking for a really compelling story definitely definitely recommend playing this game for that particular thing now when it comes to gameplay itself it's a little bit much more complex than the first one as you will have a couple of other things that you can do Amicia is much more reliable she's not as scared as before although she will still go through her phases as a young child she's only 15 and she has to deal with this world that is trying to kill her and she's trying to go through some really tough situations and it is quite transformative when it comes to that she learns a couple of new skills she uses new types of weapons like the crossbow which has been presented as well in the trailer she's much more versatile with the sling the puzzles itself are a little bit much more complex and provide you three alternative ways of dealing with them before in the past you would have a pretty straightforward way of going stealthily through the map you could use an aggressive way to dispose enemies by using rats or stuff like that but in the second one Amicia is a lot more aggressive you can choose an a much more aggressive stance you can go ahead and assassinate your targets compared to the first one which i found quite interesting because oftentimes i found myself in this one to play a lot more aggressive in order to deal with some difficult puzzles or trying to go through the enemies i found that the first one was a lot more simpler when it came to knowing where to position yourself the puzzles were a little bit much more straightforward easier to in distinguish what you need to do and what you don't need to do while this one felt a little bit much more difficult so you had to take an approach and it kind of like pushed you in the way to play more aggressive and eliminate your targets a lot more safely than actually go and sneak around all the time but of course the game offers you the possibility to sneak there as I said there are three ways the first way is to go stealthily throughout the map and you get rewarded for it there is an achievement called sneaky which you will get by upgrading your prudence which is your stealthy way of dealing so if you are going through a particular chapter or a sub chapter without killing anybody you will be rewarded with prudence skill points so that you can upgrade and get a couple of bonuses while going through the map and if you choose to go much more aggressive then you will have those aggressive ways by eliminating your targets so the more you eliminate the more you will get those aggressive skills that will help you out to give you a couple of extra bonuses and the third one is to use your alchemy skills to deal with enemies by extinguishing fires or igniting fires 
vampires or making the rats attack an enemy and so forth so it's more about using that and being more tactical but not necessarily trimming through the whole enemies in order for you to get those skills which i found quite interesting and it was pretty much similar to the first one but it got a little bit much more complex when it comes to that which i personally like although there's a few things like if you were trying to max those skills up it's rather difficult unless you're trying to go through the new game plus which i personally am going through right now as i'm doing this recording and probably by the time this video is coming out i'll be finishing that one as well and getting the game to a hundred percent but yeah overall i found that the puzzles and the difficulty level of getting through each section is a little bit much more difficult and challenging and i died a couple of times more often than not than the first one i found that the first one was rather simple to go through while this one i got caught and while i was trying to play very sneaky and stealthily it was much more easier to get spotted and well in some cases get killed this time around though you have the possibility to fight back i personally didn't want to do that but if somebody catches you while you're sneaking around you have the possibility to either run away or fight back and of course if you're being spotted and the enemies are alerted you're gonna have a hard time to deal with them generally speaking you will have one chance to survive enemy encounters so if you're being hit by an archer or by a spear thrower or by an enemy with a sword or an axe generally they will try to hit you once which is gonna half your life and the second time they will hit you if you're not recovering by then you will instantly die so it is much more simpler when it comes to that but i think it's also the fact that they're trying to make that approach back in the days as i remember amicia was a lot more frail and fragile so if she would be caught by the enemy she would pretty much instantly die well this time around she is not taking that she's quite tough compared to the previous one and the story itself she really gets tough up by the events that are happening as i was going through the story i felt like the whole events are happening very similarly to another game called tomb raider at least the newer reiterations of the the games were a lot more mature so this game takes that approach where it's a lot more serious and a lot more difficult when it comes to the challenges and the difficult trials amicia is going through not only physically but also emotionally and spiritually and it is a roller coaster that you and her have to face together which i found really interesting and i know i'm dabbling between the story and the gameplay itself but i think they're very important because they go hand in hand as there are subsections where you will have more story than others where you will have more to deal with enemy encounters the game itself is divided by chapters and depending on the chapters you will have to do a couple of things some chapters will be more oriented towards dealing with puzzles and some chapters will be oriented dealing with enemies they're both kind of the same it's just that when you're having encounters with the enemies you really have to be extra careful to not be detected if you're planning to play more stealthily while the puzzle areas are much more deadly because you're dealing with the rats so you have to be much more careful and it kind of jumbles around when it comes to that but it does it in a such a way that it doesn't get boring when it comes to one way or the other so whenever you're finishing let's say an encounter with the rats by doing a couple of puzzles you're gonna be followed by some events that are more with the enemies and in some areas along the way you will have a mix between them so you gotta be much more careful but i did find that using the rats at your advantage is probably the most approachable way unless you're trying to go with getting all the skills to the max like the stealthy skill and stuff like that once you leveled it up to the max you don't have to worry about it so you can go ahead and do the rest of the chapters that are left in the game however you like either going aggressive or going for the alchemical way trying to dispose your enemy or whatever the choice you have you also have a couple of collectibles in the game that you will be rewarded if you take them as part of the story you will have a couple of side areas that you can go throughout the world which kind of opens up the map a little bit 
for you to explore but it's still very much linear and it's only in some areas which are pretty easy to miss sometimes but if you like to explore the unbeaten path you're definitely gonna get rewarded with additional dialogues and other things that would really make the whole experience much more interesting i personally try to do everything as i said i wanted to 100 this game i really enjoy this game and i really enjoy the prequel so i really was looking forward to 100% this game and I have it on my collection as I appreciate every single bit of it and you will be rewarded for trying out and exploring. Another new feature when it comes to this game that wasn't present in the first one is the fact that you will have other companions that will join you in your adventures. They have their own special skills that you can use in order for you to look after enemies and dispose them or try to trick them in order for you to get through particular areas. I won't go into details because they're part of the story, so I'm not going to name who they are, but one of the characters that was in the first one will reappear here that I honestly really enjoyed and I feel like the transformation of his character became much more interesting and I really enjoyed the dialogues between him and Amicia and the other characters and the cast itself. It's much more interesting to have them around and they can become quite useful this time around when it comes to dealing with different kind of puzzles so yeah i found it really interesting and uh, definitely something that i did not expect to see in the sequel but it's a welcoming change now aside from that let's talk about the visuals itself I feel like the game itself ramped up visually to 20 when it comes to how the game looked. The first one looked pretty good for its years and to be honest for an indie developer I found that they put a lot of heart and effort in creating the visuals itself. It's very atmospheric, the cinematics are incredible and the visuals are stunning and I was impressed pretty much all the way as I went through the world. Oftentimes the lightning would impress me so much that I would stop and use the picture mode in order to take a couple of screenshots of the world and the environment. I really enjoyed the environment. I found that some parts in the cities and outside in caves and other places where you would explore, that would be incredibly well done and the whole illumination system and the fauna and the trees and the layout and everything look really incredible and there was a lot of effort put in that world that really made the whole thing special. Not to mention the fact that the character look really interesting. I think that each character stand uniquely and very easy to distinguish from one to the other which was important and they were very well represented by their character and interesting background story. So I really fancy that and I think if you're looking for a game that looks like a AAA but is not, this definitely is going to scratch that itch. And I'm honestly surprised by the level of detail that was put in this one. The first one still holds up even today. So if you're planning to play it, it still holds up. There was a few things that really bothered me. For example, they kind of change a little bit how some characters look like. It took me a while to get accustomed to some of them. Some of them, including Amicia, change a little bit how they look. Not too much, but enough to be noticeable. But as you progress, Progress, you will get accustomed to the new look and I think it has to do a lot with the engine and the character model that they took but overall I would say that it's really remarkable of the details and the care that was put in creating this world and sharing it the way it is now when it comes to audio i was honestly impressed and this time around i found that the music really played an important role in setting up the feeling for the game and how the story was there's a couple of moments in the game where there's this instrument that plays pretty much every time something is about to happen and really scary up the whole feeling there were a couple of soundtracks that really stuck out with me and i thought that they were incredible and after finishing the game i even went on spotify and listened to a couple of them i thought that they were incredible and they are memorable 
and a lot better than it was in the first one not to mention the fact that this game really feels 10 times more epic than the first one the music itself really holds up to create that atmosphere and and create that suspense that surprisingly caught me off guard not only that but also the voice acting was incredibly done amicia and hugo actually improved when it comes to that and amicia would be probably the most noticeable one that you will notice from the first one hugo as well i cannot say that it wasn't he does have more dialogue than actually just calling amicia every single time and the conversations are much more deep much more emotional and much more stronger this time that i really fell in love with the characters the new introduction of the characters are very interesting and very likable in my opinion and i think that they did a really good job at presenting the characters i really enjoyed them i thought that they were excellent companions and really created a very solid bond between amicia and those characters and i really felt compelled of having them in my group and hearing what they have to say in the dialogues of course as the previous one as i said they're very linear so the conversations don't really change but the way they were structured and they were explained it's really nice and i honestly enjoyed every single moment that i had there's one particular character that bothered me at least at the beginning was the voice actor of the mother of amicia beatrice she was changed by somebody else and at first i noticed it and i was like i don't know about this but as the game progressed and i saw the performance of the character i understood why they probably made the change or maybe there was something else going on but i really started enjoying her as well and we get to see her side a lot more the motherly side a lot more i feel like in the first one she was a lot more tougher when it comes to how she was portrayed she was more more like that while amicia was the one that was more scared and worried while this time around the roles are a little bit much more changed when it comes to that and i like that i thought that there was much more more, you know character when it was presented and i can say that that was something that i didn't expect that i really thought that they will carry on the voice actors but it seemed not and still after a while you will get used to it if you get further into the story and probably not even notice that much when it comes to that but personally i did i was like wait a second she doesn't really sound like the first one or at least the way she talks uh, is a little bit different and she does change a little bit over time as does amicia Hugo and other characters in the game. Now lastly, I want to talk about performance because I think it really plays an important role in enjoying this game. This game, when it came out, had some performance issues when it comes to mid-tier, maybe low-tier, so a lot of people probably struggled playing this game, including myself, so I couldn't actually play it, though I avoided to play it because I knew that it was requiring a lot. So by the time of this recording, there was a couple of patches that fixed the game and made it much more playable. Uh, you also have the DLSS, which really improves the frame rate. But I did notice before the patch itself that there were hiccups when it comes to the performance itself. And the game itself run for me between 60 to 120 frames with the DLSS on auto mode. And after switching it to performance, the game run a lot much more smoother. But I did have some dips here and there when it comes to the cities and um, whenever the map would be a little bit too complicated and it would have a lot of things to show in that particular way especially when you're looking down from a cliff or high area you would notice that the frames will dip a little bit in the 30s or 40s and then it spy back up but of course if you do have a much more beefier computer i have a rtx 3080 if, if you're running with the fourth generation you're probably not gonna feel that much of a problem especially if you have the dlss so yeah that shouldn't be a problem but if you'd run with something much more weaker do expect a little bit of frames so there might be some issues despite this game being linear it does offer a lot of visuals and there's a lot of things to see i do feel like it could have been a little bit much more better optimized but of course we're in 2023 and pretty much every game nowadays is not performing to its most optimal way but do keep in mind i believe that for consoles this shouldn't be an issue i think that it should run perfectly fine at 60 frames but for the pc version
version where I played it, I found that to be a particular issue, which I wanted to point it out. It's not that noticeable, as I said, but depending on what kind of system you have, you will notice that there will be dips in frame rate. That being said, I think I extended this video quite a bit and I had spoke about pretty much everything I wanted to. As a final verdict for this game, as usual, we always rate it based on our score system. So personally, if I were to score this game, I would actually give it the rating of a masterpiece. I really enjoyed it over the first one. I really think that there were severe improvements in the storytelling, the visuals, the music, and the gameplay itself. But of course, this game might not be for everybody, but I urge you to try it out and as well play the first one and see for yourself if this game is for you. It does lack a couple of things that other games does better, but still, I think it is worth keeping in mind. So overall, I would say that this game goes in the excellent, that would be maybe an 8 or a 9 out of 10 for others. So as a masterpiece, it would be a 9 or a 10 in our books. I thought that it was incredible and the performance done by the voice actor was incredible and the other characters really, really impressive. The visuals itself really impressed me and I can't stress enough how important it is to have this kind of games that really break the expectations of an indie developer and I'm looking forward to see where this game lands next. So yeah, that is my overall opinion of the game. That being said, I want to thank you very much for watching until the end. I really appreciate it and before I end this video, I want to ask you if you enjoyed this kind of video, give us a thumbs up. It really helps us to reach to more people as we are trying to get to a 1000 subscribers and it would mean the world to us as we're trying to grow this channel and honestly we appreciate it and if you do enjoy this kind of content and you want to see more of the things that we do we have listing videos for indie games and other games that you want to check out and as well we're having discussions about video games and reviews like this you can support us by subscribing to our channel it really helps us a lot and turning on the post notification so that you're going to be informed every time we post something new as always and as i said in the previous videos you should definitely check our discord channel we have over there a small community of people who enjoy video games like us they enjoy indies they enjoy AAA games and we're doing over there giveaways and because i talked today about playtale requiem we're also giving that game away on the next month so if you're interested for that and you want to take part in that for sure you should definitely come and join us for now in this month we're giving forza horizon 5 and if you're interested to play that game you can definitely do so and yeah that's pretty much it and i really appreciate it thank you very much for sticking around i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys in the next video take care stay safe and happy gaming